Okay, let's get ready for this. It's a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. <laughs> Welcome my people. How are you all doing today? Welcome to my channel once again. My name is Choma. I am sure there's a few of you out there who would be seeing me in this video for the very first time. And today's video, as you can tell, I am in a very, very good mood, right? Because today I am going to be speaking from the heart. I'm going to be talking to you heart to heart. You are my rock. Yes, I know that sounds cliche, but it's true. Right here in this space, on this street, you are making it happen. I woke up this morning to 190 subscribers. Can you, can you imagine that? Especially thinking about the fact that when I started this journey about five months ago, five, six months ago, okay, I started with zero subscribers. <laughs> and now I am at 190. I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. And in the spirit of that gratitude, I thought I would encourage you back. I actually had plans for the video that I wanted to shoot or that I wanted to post this week. But then I thought to myself, you know, it's not every time that I want to do things that are scripted. It's not every time that I want to have to make notes and sit down here and be so structured and so serious and so all of that, okay? <laughs> there are times when the occasion calls for just letting go of those constraints and those restraints around being structured and sounding a certain way and coming across a certain way, okay? Today, I am just going to be Anyhow, <laughs> let me say it as a, as a true Nigerian. I'm just going to be anyhow today. But yeah, so I wanted to actually encourage you because you do drop comments, you drop questions. And what I am getting or what is coming through to me quite strongly is the fact that a lot of you are at different stages of some kind of planning. It could be planning towards relocation to another country or to Australia. It could be planning towards international education. It could be planning towards a career change. Lots of planning going on. Today's video is just to encourage you to say, go for it. Okay, it is valid. Those dreams can become a reality. And I guess the reason I, um, I, I thought to actually sit down and make a video out of this whole thing is because I had some time to reflect on our own journey all those years ago almost seven years ago, when we made that decision to leave Nigeria and come to Australia. I remember very clearly the day that my husband came back and he was like, what was that thing you said about moving abroad? I think we should start looking into it. And that was it. That was it. <laughs> from that day on, even though it took us another year and a half from that moment, we became committed to that dream. We became committed to making that dream a reality. And throughout that process, and even after we arrived in Australia, it was tedious, it was hard at so many points, it was challenging. To be honest with you, at the time that we were making that commitment, we did not have the money to do it. Yes, we didn't. As a matter of fact, just a little before that particular day that my husband said this to me, we had pulled our first daughter out of school because we could not afford her school fees anymore. We were in dire financial straits. On paper, it looked like we were well off, but in reality, we weren't. I did make a video where I spoke a little bit about some of the decisions that came into play um, towards making that decision to leave Nigeria in my get to know me tag. So please go and watch that video. I would encourage you to watch that video. It was fun to, to film and I'm sure you would enjoy it. Go watch that video, okay? What I am saying is that when we made that commitment, our immediate situation was not encouraging. There was nothing around us at that time to suggest that that dream was actually going to be a reality. When I have spoken to people about their relocation plans and I hear things like, we would really love to relocate, but we don't have the money. It's too expensive. It is not anything we can afford. I hear you. And I am not sitting here to dismiss the fact that relocation in any capacity is expensive. I'm not going to dispute that. 
it is expensive. But why I am making this video today is just to share with you a little bit about our journey. So I guess the person who would benefit the most from this video is anyone who is strongly desiring to relocate but feels like there's too many limiting factors around them. I may not know your particular situation and what you're facing. And so I am not going to sit here and claim that everything I say on here, you know, can be applied effectively to your own situation. But, you know, take what you can and leave the rest if it doesn't apply to you. So the first step for us was that commitment, committing to that process. We knew at that point that the question wasn't anymore about whether we wanted to leave Nigeria. It was more, when did we want to leave? It was more, where did we want to go? Okay, but in terms of whether we were going to leave Nigeria, that was settled. There was no question about it. Maybe you want to grab yourself a notebook and a pen and take down notes and review these notes. Okay, I am sure it would help. <laughs> okay, so the first thing you want to write down in your notebook would be commitment. Commit to that process. And I guess uh, a part of that commitment would be for you to acknowledge and to accept that you're going to have to sacrifice some things, maybe a lot of things you're going to have to sacrifice. Remember when I said we pulled our kid out of school then? A little after that, we raised some money and we had an option at that time to put the kid back in school, but we decided against it. Because looking at the bigger picture for us, okay, and what our priorities were, Relocation from Nigeria was top on that list. It had become a huge priority. Every other thing had been pushed back on that list and relocation had taken top spot. And so at that time, we had to sacrifice things, okay? And that included our kid going back to school. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, right? Like, who prioritizes other things over their kid being in school? We were those people. <laughs> But yeah, what I thought about at that time was looking at the bigger picture, would it matter five, 10, 15 years down the track that our daughter missed one year of school? I didn't think it would matter. And also looking at what we were working towards, okay? We were coming into a country where the same child would have had to stay another two or three years at home before becoming of school age in Australia. So at you know, looking at it from those angles, it didn't quite make sense for her to be going back to school. And again, we needed that money to go towards something else aligned with our plan. And that was what we did. She didn't go back to school. We kept her at home. And it took us a year and a half from that moment, okay, until we left Nigeria. Yes, in Nigeria, if you were wondering, kids actually start school really early. It's not really government sanctioned, but it's just something that has become generally accepted to enroll your kid in school when they're just like two years old. You know, some parents even, even go younger than that. So be ready to sacrifice things. And I guess the level of priority that your plans take would also determine the level of commitment you apply towards achieving those plans. But commitment is key. Number two was planning. And let me tell you, <laughs> before I say anything else about planning, I could spend the whole day on this point alone, planning. But the ones that I think are really, really important for you to keep in mind would be things related to researching your options and reading everything, every single thing that you can find, every information you can find about the process you're about to start or about the journey you're about to embark on. Read everything that there is to know about that journey. In this case, we're talking about your relocation, right? It is your journey. You want to thrive, you want to succeed. So please do not relegate this to the background. Do not relegate it to someone else just because you're able to afford the services of a migration agent does not mean that you pay them and you go to sleep. That's not how it works, okay? Do your research. When we decided that we were going to leave Nigeria, it wasn't clear from that moment that we would end up in Australia. We thought about our options and that included the options of countries that we could go to. So we considered Australia, Canada, Singapore and New Zealand. These four were our strong options and we read everything. Believe me, we read everything we needed to know about going to these countries, relocating to these countries. As a matter of fact, we actually started the process towards relocating to Canada. 
somewhere down the track, something happened and we had to change our plans. Okay. And I'm quite happy we changed our plans because for me, Australia was my first option. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that was what happened. We did engage the services of a migration agent, but guess what? Because I was doing my own research, I was able to pick out little things that he was advising us to do, which were not right, not correct, and which could potentially have landed us in, in trouble. Who knows, our visa application might have been denied. One of those mistakes or one of those errors he made was to ask us to fill an outdated form. I was the one who picked out the error because I had been reading, I had been researching, I had read everything on the immigration website back to back regarding the visa we were applying for. And there's another angle to that as well. You can actually DIY that process from start to finish. Thankfully now, I know lots of people here in Australia who, who went through that process by themselves, like who did everything themselves. They did not engage the services of anyone and they were successful. And I also know people who went through an agent and they were not successful. It can swing either way. What actually determines your success in terms of visa applications and everything is whether you're meeting all those requirements. And a migration agent will not be helping you meet those requirements if you don't already have evidence of meeting those requirements. They are not there to manufacture evidence for you. They will only work with what you give them. So it is a process you can do um, by yourself. And I was saying that another angle to that is the fact that you can actually save money there as well. You can save money and put it towards something else. So instead of paying a migration agent, you could put that money towards something else aligned with your goal. Okay. And that brings me to the next point. Break down every stage, break down that whole process into tiny little steps. If you think about it, migration is hardly something that you start in the morning and you're done by evening. It requires lots of different stages, each of them having their own requirements. So break that whole process down into tiny manageable steps. And that also goes to the cost as well. So instead of thinking in your head that you need to raise this huge amount of money to get you through from start to finish, no, think about it in terms of what is realistic for you and what is the stage in front of you that you need to cross to get to the next one. Focus on that you know what you're working towards and that's your bigger picture. But to get there, there's all these different steps you need to take. So focus on the step in front of you, put one foot in front of the other. That was certainly what we did. When I say that we couldn't afford that process, that's exactly what it was. We were raising money as we went, okay? We were, we were focusing on each step in front of us and applying our efforts to, to achieving that step. And then when we moved on to the next step, we repeated the whole process all over again. And so when I say that it took us a year and a half, that is exactly why it took us a year and a half. Now I know there are some other people who think about relocating and it happens for them in three months. It happens for them in six months. It happens for them in, you know, eight months. But in our case, we knew what we we're working towards. We knew what our position was. And so we, we worked at our own pace. So break it down into little steps. And on the back of everything I have said regarding your planning, please, Please take advantage of all the free resources out there. I have said this before. I wish I could have found YouTube channels of Nigerians who had relocated to Australia at the time that we left Nigeria. I couldn't find one. I searched high and low on YouTube. I could find um, YouTube channels from people who had migrated from Nigeria to the UK, to Canada, to the US, but not to Australia. And it was frustrating. I wanted to know everything that I needed to know. Those days, I would stay up in the night between 12 a.m. and 5 p. and 5 a.m., okay? I was taking advantage of um, free data that the network provider I was using then, which was Glow, <laughs> was offering at that time. And I think MTN was doing the same thing as well. So MTN and Glow are like the biggest or where the biggest, because I don't know if there's another giant that has come up in Nigeria right now, but MTN and Glow were like the biggest network providers back then. And I was a Glow user. So I would stay up in the night and take advantage of the free data between 5 a.m. and 12 a.m., uh, between 12 a.m. and 5 a.m., researching, reading, taking notes. 
when I had finished everything that I could find on immigration, you know, the next thing I started doing, I started going on Google Maps and I would use Google Street View <laughs> to find out locations of places here in Australia. I had never been to Australia, but I was looking at streets in, you know, in real time view. I was strolling through those streets virtually. OK, I was finding where the shops were located. I was researching about the cost of accommodation, all those things. And it would have made perfect sense at that time to find YouTubers, okay, sharing their experience of living here in Australia. It would have made perfect sense to me. And that's part of the reason why I started this channel. Now, the good news for you is that there's a community of Nigerians and may I say Africans. I know a few from Kenya as well. There's Mercy and then there's Adeline. There's a community, okay, of YouTubers right now, right here who are doing a fantastic job sharing their experiences and putting out this knowledge for free. There's no reason for you not to be taking advantage of these YouTube channels. And I'm going to tell you a few of them. I know about English prep class. So English prep class is the YouTube channel name. Okay. And the person who runs it is Juliet. I consider Juliet my friend. I have not met her in person, but she's my good friend. Okay. And Juliet is doing a fantastic job tutoring people on how to pass their English exams, specifically PTE. She has all these tips and tricks and strategies that she's putting out there for free on how you can pass your English exams. Yes, she focuses on PTE, but I am sure that a lot of the strategies that she talks about would also apply to any other English exam you have to write. There is Uche, Uche darling. <laughs> Uche lives with her family in Toowoomba, Australia, and I'm going to link all of their channels below, okay, so that you can check them out. She, um, Uche and her family arrived in Australia on a regional provisional visa, which means that any moment now, given how long she's been in Australia for, any moment now they would be granted permanent residency. And the beautiful thing about Uche's story is that they did it themselves. Yes, no migration agent was involved in getting them ready to migrate, okay? <laughs> so you want to check out Uche's channel. I think her channel name is um, Niger Mom in Australia or something. I'm going to, oh, Uche, forgive me, okay? It's not like I forgot, but my brain is frozen right now. So I'm going to put the right thing on the screen and you can also find the link in the description box. There is Aisha Lagunju. Aisha is also a Nigerian who lives here in Australia. She landed here with her family as permanent residents. Yes, yes. So they were permanent residents already before they even left Nigeria. And guess what? They did it themselves. Permanent residency. They processed everything by themselves. Okay. No help from a migration agent. Same with Abby. I think of her in my head as Abby. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. But her YouTube channel is Abby Sola. Oluojo, and she is also sharing her experience of how they moved from Nigeria to Australia as permanent residents. She and her family live in Perth, which is in Western Australia. And then there is Azizat Show TV. Azizat is, is this bubbly sister, okay? She, she does so many things on her channel, but she gives you a closer look into what life is like here, especially if you're going to be migrating as a family. Um, and then she talks a lot, also giving you tips and encouraging you in your relationships and things like that, all that fun stuff. So you also want to check Azizat out. There is Ejiro. I can't remember her last name now. And I think her YouTube channel is her name and her last name. But Ejiro is also putting out invaluable information on her YouTube channel. I think she came in as a student. I may be wrong, but she talks a lot about universities that you can apply to here, the cost, scholarships, you know, all that good stuff. So maybe you want to check her out as well. And then there is yours truly. We came in here as students. Yes, my husband arrived here on a student visa and we joined him a few months later on the same visa. So if you think about it, we all come with a variety of different experiences and these are the things we bring to the table. So whether you want to, to come in as a student or you want to know if um, applying for permanent residency from your home country is viable. You want to be checking Aisha and Abisola out. If you wanted to know how to migrate to a regional area, Uche is there. I mean, 
We all come from different experiences and I am so happy that we are sharing this with you. So there's no excuse not to take advantage of all of this. That's part of the planning. So make use of all the tools, all the resources, go online, search on, you know, all these different forums where people ask questions and then other people who have gone through those, um, through that process, answer those questions. Take advantage of all these things. They are free. Okay. Sacrifice some time, <laughs> sacrifice some time from Facebook and Instagram and do this thing. It is crucial, especially if your relocation is top priority for you. And that brings me to the third and final thing I want to talk about, which is patience. Patience, my darling, patience. Okay. It is your journey. It's not another person's journey. And I know, especially going by the sentiment of what I think is happening in Nigeria right now, where people are living in droves. Oh my goodness. I can't imagine what's going on down there, but it feels like people wake up every day to news that this brother has left, that friend has left, that family over there, they are living in a week. Um, the other cousin is living in, in one month. I mean, and if you're someone who is desiring to leave and you're in that kind of situation where people are just leaving left, right, center, I can only imagine the pressure that you would feel thinking like your own plans are not going anywhere. You're just going round and round in circles or there's too many limitations in your own way of achieving your, your dream. What I want to say here is patience. Again, I would go, I would remind you again, it took us a year and a half. And yes, it might take you a little longer than that, but I want you to stay committed to your process. It might take you shorter than that. It might take you longer than that, but stay committed to your process. Okay. Um, focus on your own pace. Now, another thing that happens with feeling pressured, okay. And acting on that pressure is exposing yourself to a lot of different risks. People are getting scammed <laughs> all over the place. Okay. That's when you start listening to stories about some agent, some obscure, random, sketchy agent somewhere who would give you a visa if you would pay them a certain amount of money. I, I see people falling into these sorts of traps. So just the other day, someone sent something to my husband. It was some sketchy thing about a program that was running in New Zealand and also in Australia. Um, where the governments of these respective countries are trying to attract people through a special migration program. It was all fake. That's just what I'm trying to say. We didn't even have to read down the whole thing to, to know that it was fake. The whole thing had the look of fakeness on it. It had the stamp of fakeness on it. But unfortunately, that's the kind of traps that are being laid for people all over the place and people are falling for it. So please do not feel pressured. Stay committed to your own process, okay? The goal is not just to relocate, but also to thrive. So do it the right way, do it the proper way, and you will not regret it. Yeah, so that's what I actually came on here to share with you. Just the same way you've been encouraging me on this channel, I want to encourage you back. Do not give up hope, don't quit, don't despair. Go back to your drawing board, review your plans, um, think about how to make those plans smaller, okay, achievable, okay, celebrate your successes along the way and when those frustrating moments come, realize that they are only going to be momentary and they will pass, okay, and I wish you all the best going forward and I'll see you again in my next video. Bye-bye.